These are artificial coral reefs off the coast of the Gili Islands in Indonesia. There is something special about these reefs. They are electrified. By electrifying man-made metal structures, scientists and conservationists hope to help some coral reefs regrow. And I flew to Indonesia to learn more about how this works and to add my little contribution to these underwater coral cities. I was seven weeks in Indonesia. One of the reasons was to go on a trip with some of you guys, which was awesome and fantastic. There might be another one like that coming soon, so keep your eyes open for that if you want to join next time. But the other reason was because I wanted to learn more about this coral restoration method that uses electricity. Coral reefs are underwater ecosystems that have at their base reef building corals. Corals are animals and they form colonies of several genetically identical polyps. That is one polyp, one individual, as are all its neighbors. Together they form a coral colony which is kept together by a calcium carbonate skeleton they produce. Coral reefs occupy less than 1% of the planet's surface, but are home to more than one-fourth of all marine life. And even many species that don't live here visit these ecosystems to feed, get cleaned or have babies. It is safe to say that without coral reefs, the ocean and the world would look really different. Australia's Great Barrier Reef has experienced another That's mass called bleaching coral event. Bleaching. Bad news in itself, so right now we're on track on the brink of an ocean heat wave emergency and threatening to wipe out Florida's coral reefs. Today, at least 44% of the coral reefs are seen. You look down and you see just fade white coral skeleton. It's heartbreaking. Because of the ever-growing environmental threats the ocean has been subjected to over the past decades, the planet has lost half of its coral reefs since the 1950s. Many have been trying to figure out the best ways not only to preserve what is left, but also to restore a part of what has been lost. The good news is that there are people, communities and organizations that are trying to find the best ways they can to counteract this destruction. And I went to Gili Trawangan, or Gili T as some say in Indonesia, to join one of those organizations. I am in Gili T in Lombok, which is part of Indonesia. And I'm currently on a two weeks coral restoration course. Gili Echo Trust is an organization that does a bunch of environmental projects on the Gili Islands. One of their main focuses is the protection and restoration of local coral reefs. I joined 11 fantastic people on a two-week course taught by Delphine, a true underwater woman, to learn more about the work they do in coral reef restoration. Coral reef restoration is the process of increasing the health, abundance or biodiversity of coral reefs. There are many different coral restoration methods, but I was specially interested in learning about one called BioRock. BioRock is a cement-like material formed when a small electric current is passed between underwater metal electrodes, and it is the perfect base for corals to attach to and grow. There are over 500 bio-rock reefs around the world, most of them in Indonesia. In Gili T alone, there are 150, and my colleagues and I were about to add one more. The first thing we had to do was build a cool looking metallic structure. So we built this orca slash dugong fusion hybrid out of a giant cage and some rebar. And we named her Sharkira. It took us two afternoons to build the structure and weld the edges. And on the third morning, we took her out on a boat to be released into the wild. When we arrived on location, we slid Sharkira into the ocean. Unfortunately, I was sick that day, so I couldn't dive, but my fellow bio rockers did a great job in then transporting the entire structure structure to its final dwelling place. They then took corals that had been previously broken from the surrounding area and tied them to Sharkira, giving them a new chance at life. The structure was then connected to other bio-rock reefs with the cable, which were connected to a solar panel, which in turn was also connected to a small titanium structure placed on the seabed. When provided a low voltage electric current by the solar panel, the reef structure becomes positively charged. And this is called the cathode. And the titanium piece becomes negatively charged, the anode. This creates a flow of electrons from the anode to the cathode, creating an electromagnetic field around the metal structures. This generates calcium and carbonate ions that then adhere to the metal reef structure forming calcium carbonate. 
Over time, a new type of stronger and self-repairing cement forms, creating a strong and durable base for corals to attach and grow. Having a good structure to attach to might not be the only reason why this method works so well. There is some evidence suggesting that corals that grow on biorock have a higher growth rate and a lower mortality rate than corals that grow elsewhere. And there is an explanation as to why this might be. Hard corals create skeletons out of calcium carbonate, also produced in the biorock, as we just saw. Under normal conditions, corals spend energy to produce enough carbonate ions to be able to produce calcium carbonate and build up their skeleton. However, in the case of the biorock reefs, carbonate ions are created through the electromagnetic field. This means that the energy the corals would have spent producing the carbonate ions can now be used for other things, like growing, reproducing, and fighting stressors. Which means more and bigger coral, which means more biodiversity. Which means good. Now, while this is a plausible explanation for these reef success, to be able to make more definite conclusions on why corals might like biorock, more research is needed on the actual physiological impact of the electromagnetic field on the corals. Regardless, looking at the incredible life that has engulfed some of the older biorock reefs in Galiti, I can attest that to some extent it does seem to work. So I have great hopes for Sharkira. But, because there is always a but, there are also some limitations and things that need to be considered regarding biorock reefs. There is still some discussion among scientists as to what extent corals that survive on biorock really are better off than corals that grow elsewhere. This mostly stems from the fact that there haven't been many studies done comparing different methods. Which is kind of true, I didn't find many research comparing different restoration methods, but I did find some that suggest that at least some species of corals have higher survival rates and grow faster when they grow on biorock than on other surfaces. It's also important to keep in mind that this electromagnetic field might affect species differently, and it's very important to understand how in order to maximize the efficiency of this method. So research funding agencies, I'm looking at you. And of course, whenever we talk about restoration, it's important important to remember that that alone is not enough. We need not only to restore, but also to preserve what still exists. And we also need more actions that act at larger scales. Don't get me wrong, local action is extremely important. They are many times the base and the foundation for then bigger actions to be taken. They are super important, not only because they restore local biodiversity, but also because many times they involve local communities. During the Sharkira project, we had locals transporting Sharkira, welding, operating the boat, always there helping us along the way. These are the people that are directly affected by the destruction of of these ecosystems and the ones with the power and the will to protect them in the future. By participating in these projects, people start understanding the value that preserving and restoring the marine environment around them has in their lives. And for that alone, projects like the BioRock are already worth it. We lead local, regional, and global scale solutions at this point. So despite all the limitations I talked about, this is an amazing project to have been part of. I love learning about the method, I loved building the reef and working with so many amazing people to make this happen, and I'm really excited to know what happens with Sharkira in a couple of years from now. I would love to go there and see how, how our baby is doing. It's also always very inspiring to meet hard-working, passionate people who dedicate their lives to these endeavors and these projects and protecting the ocean. In the middle of so much negativity and negative news, it's really a breath of fresh air. <laughs>
out their website, which I will leave down below. Check them out. They're awesome. You know who else is awesome? My Patreons. Patreons, thank you so much for putting up with my on and off absence on YouTube. I appreciate you guys so, so, so much. Thank you. And thank you everyone who is watching. If you have any other questions, any comments, anything that is not really clear, please write them down in the comments. I will try to answer as much as I can. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.